we're rewriting history. Tom Hatton is. He's the former head of the Environmental Protection Authority. He hit the headlines in 2019 when he arbitrarily decided to introduce a de facto carbon tax in WA. Wanted to force companies building new projects that emitted more than 100,000 tonnes of carbon a year to offset those emissions. And for you, when for me. Said he had to act because the WA government had sat on its hands while the state's emissions had gone up by more than a quarter in the past 16 years. Tom felt he needed to save us from all the crap in the air. Stay here, I'll be back. He copped a lot of shit, but he stuck to his guns. Right up to the point he didn't. Put the gun down now! After a few days of being beaten up in the media, Tom did the kind of backflip you'd expect more from a Cirque du Soleil performer than a government bureaucrat. <laughs> but he insisted definitively that he was not pressured by Mark McGowan or the fossil fuel industry. Fast forward four years, and Tom is insisting definitively he was pressured by Mark McGowan and the fossil fuel industry. Says Mark rang him to complain. Told him to withdraw the policy. And now Tom's complaining that Tom agreed to do that, even though the EPA is an independent authority designed to give fearless, apolitical advice to the government. When McGowan rang him, Tom should have said, F*** off. Instead, he did as he was told, then waited four years to eventually tell the truth. And we're expected to somehow applaud him for that. McGowan should never have wrung him. No. McGowan was as gutless as Hatton was. The government could have ignored the Environmental Protection Authority's advice. Thanks. I'll look into it. The EPA can't make laws. It only makes recommendations. But McGowan didn't want to be seen to be in the pocket of the resources industry, so he pressured Tom into watering down the guidelines that he could agree to. No good for the environment. No. Great outcome for the future job prospects of senior MPs, though. All of which is academic for Chevron at the moment because their problem isn't how many emissions are being produced, it's how few. Workers on the Gorgon and Wheatstone gas plants have begun their strikes. Started small, a three-hour walk-off after talks failed on Friday, but that'll grow to 10 hours a day this week. If Chevron refuses to come to the party by September 14, then we're looking at two weeks of 24-hour strikes. I reckon it'll come to that? No. Chevron and the unions are playing chicken, testing who's more committed. For Chevron, it's a maths problem. Analysts at EnergyQuest have calculated that between them, Chevron and Woodside made $132 million a day shipping LNG to Asia in July, just in July. When you're making $91,800 a minute, even a half hour shutdown hurts. EnergyQuest reckons one day of revenue is 240 grand per worker, so the cost of foregone revenue outweighs the cost of paying the workers more. Get off your ass, let's do some math, 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 math. For the unions, it's a PR problem. They can't afford to shut down Gorgon and Wheatstone totally because those plants supply a shit ton of the domestic gas that we use to have hot showers. Heat this shit up. The gas also fuels the electricity generators that keep the lights on and allow local government aspirants in the southwest to watch their favourite movies on TV. I was wondering when you'd get to this guy. Please meet prospective Bustleton councillor Stephen Wells. Steve O's running on a platform of inclusivity, saying in his candidate profile that he is well suited to represent the views of all in our community. And he is as long as that community doesn't include women, blacks, Jews, gays, trans or Muslims. Turns out Steve is a not-so-secret white supremacist. He's committed to fighting something called globo-homo retardation. Oh, that old thing. Steve thinks all women in politics are... I don't know if that's whores or whales. Either way, it probably contravenes the city of Bustleton's diversity, equity and inclusion protocols. Oh, he's a weird dude. Gets weirder. He's got a mermaid fetish. Contact between the human world and the mer world is strictly forbidden. Steve is partial to wearing a rubber fishtail and as a self-confessed merfolk representative, staunchly defends his wife's right to sport a mermaid outfit in public swimming pools. And they don't understand the products, they don't understand the whole movement. The mermaid movement. Is a thing, unlike Steve's political prospects. Losing might be a blessing in disguise for him, though. Those late-night council sittings would mean less time standing at the end of Bustard and Jetty jerking off to Ariel while wearing a Ku Klux Klan shirt. Oh, gross. Too much? Just go away.
I'm Ben Harvey. Oh, you've just ruined my favourite Disney film. <laughs> For more up late, click the subscribe button below.